What's up, everybody? It's Trey Smith, one half of the Blue Bloods College Game Time Podcast. I'm here with a Razor reaction. What a weekend it was, particularly Sunday. We uh, officially got uh, invited to the Outback Bowl to play Penn State. Uh, we got a big time, big time five-star transfer who committed to the University of Arkansas. And we got a little news that... Uh, I know some Hawk fans, self-included, are a little uneasy about uh, about Pit Boss changing his representation and uh, switching over to Jimmy Sexton. So those are kind of three topics I'm going to go over here real quick. Um, but let's talk. Let's talk about the Outback Bowl. Hats off to this team. Hats off to this coaching staff. Hats off to the fans, the administration, Hunter Yurichek, everybody. We got the New Year's Day Bowl that this team so just desperately had earned. And I'm so glad that the way this thing worked out, that the hogs didn't get shafted. Okay. I would have been happy with a bowl bit with a, with, with any bowl bid, but I really was looking forward to the opportunity to play our bowl game on new year's day. Obviously some of you saw the video I posted about that last week, but they got it. It's the Outback Bowl versus Penn state. And I've seen some negative criticism about our opponent in in that, oh, Penn State's only seven and five, and they're not even ranked, and we we should have gotten a better opponent than that. And I'd say let's pump the brakes on that, because whereas those statements about Penn State might be true, this is a quality opponent. And I know their record is is significantly an underachieving record from where Penn State's expectations were, not just coming into the season, but even partway into the season. But there's a couple things about this Nittany Lion team I want to make sure we don't forget. One is they beat Auburn, okay? They beat Auburn this season, and we did not. So there's one argument that Penn State's a quality opponent. Two, had they not lost their quarterback against Iowa in what was a top five matchup at the time, number three versus number four, they win that game. Go back and watch it. I watched that game pretty intently because it was a topic of discussion on our Blue Bloods College Game Time podcast uh, week four or five or whenever it was, uh, maybe week three. But that was a number three versus number four. So Penn State, they're well coached. They have talent. Did they underachieve this year? Yeah. Was the expectation on Penn State um, comparable to what Michigan ended up doing this year, this season. I think, I think there were a lot of people, self-included, who thought Penn State might be the team that makes the run in the Big Ten this year and knocks off Ohio State and gets that spot in the uh, CFP. But, hey, hats off to Michigan. They're the ones that did it. But all that to say, this is a quality opponent. And uh, I'll have a video a little bit later as we get closer to the bowl game that more specifically dives into this matchup. I've got a Big Ten fan guru who's going to join me, and we're going to talk about um, the Penn State versus Arkansas matchup because I've watched Penn State a little bit this year, but it's not I'm not a big Big Ten guy. So I hadn't watched a lot of them. I watched them play against... Auburn I watched them play against Iowa that was early in the season since then I hadn't really seen so we will have a new video uh coming out um that, that more thoroughly breaks down the matchup between Arkansas and Penn State in the Outback Bowl but at the end of the day can we just enjoy the bowl bid can we just enjoy the fact uh that we're playing on New Year's Day that we're playing for an opportunity to get nine wins for the first time since 2011. I mean, come on, like, let's just be happy. Let's be excited. Let's go in to win this game against who I believe is a quality opponent. Even if you want to argue with me about, oh, they're seven and five, they're unranked. They're not a quality opponent. Just the name recognition, Arkansas versus Penn State, the Razorbacks versus the Nittany Lions like that. That to me is two just quality caliber blue blood like teams facing off in this matchup. So I'm pumped. And especially when you factor in that two, three years ago, like we're getting beat by teams like North Texas and Western Kentucky. Um, we're on like one of the longest SEC game losing streets in the streaks in the history of the SEC. I mean, just terrible times. And Sam Pittman comes in, completely changes the culture, completely 
turns over the roster in some regards, wins over the roster in other regards, and now has this team competing at such a high level. We get so much more practice time now. It's like we almost get a third season. We, um, we, 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 we get additional practice time. We can really bring these young guys along who have contributed significantly. I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a great game. Secondly, Jaden Hazelwood, former number one ride wide receiver in the country. Okay. He was a top five national recruit. Jaden Hazelwood, top five national recruit. He's been at OU. He announced Sunday via his Twitter account that he was coming to Arkansas. He hit the transfer portal when Lincoln Riley left. His high school football coach was Razorbacks current running backs coach, Jimmy Smith. Okay. At Cedar Grove, I believe in the Atlanta area down in Georgia. Um, won a state championship together, and now Jaden Hazelwood is coming to the Hill. Where that's going to benefit us significantly is not that he's going to replace Traylon Burks, okay? No one's going to replace Traylon Burks. Traylon Burks is a freak who, I'm going to talk about him in just a second, but there's no replacing Traylon Burks. However, we're going to have to try and find a way to replace his production. And I think you can find ways to replace his production in, in, in bringing in talented guys like Jaden Hazelwood. Hazelwood is a big physical receiver. He's a great jump ball guy. Like I haven't just sit here and done some extensive film breakdown of Jaden Hazelwood, but the guy is a beast and he's going to be phenomenal in this Arkansas offense. Now back to Traylon Burks. I have a source like some of you watching this video do who's very close to the program that I trust significantly when it comes to Razorback information, who's telling me he believes Traylon Burks is 50-50 right now as to whether or not he stays or goes to the league. Now, if I had to bet money on it, he's going to the league. He's going to be a first-round draft pick, and wherever he goes, I'm buying his jersey. I'm just praying that he does not go to the Philadelphia Eagles. But if he does, I will break down and I'll buy his jersey. But please, anywhere but the Eagles. But I'm hearing some rumors, uh, or even some rumors I think have, have even been released out there that there's a potentially massive NIL deal in the works to try and get him to stay. Hey, it's all hearsay at this point, but my buddy seems to think he's at least 50-50 right now. Traylon Burks is not your typical uh, kid who's just trying to go and make all this money and, and do all this, even though he absolutely deserves to do so. And I wouldn't blame him one bit. If he goes to the NFL, takes his first round, gets his first round uh, draft pick, gets his first round draft pick money and goes on and hopefully makes the same impact in the NFL that he's made at the university of Arkansas. However, there is still some smoke around him maybe coming back. And if you put him on the same field with Jaden Hazelwood, with KJ Jefferson and the stable of running backs, we have coming back. Pig suey. And finally, Pit Boss changed representation. Everybody knows that. He changed over his agent to Jimmy Sexton. <laughs> and I know he did clarify Sunday in a press conference that this has no bearing on how he feels about the University of Arkansas. It has no bearing on how convicted he is and confident he is that he wants to finish his career at the University of Arkansas, and then he's probably going to go retire to Hot Springs. But it's not Pitt Boss that I'm worried about. I trust Sam Pittman wholeheartedly. It's Jimmy Sexton that I don't trust, and it's not that I don't trust Jimmy Sexton because he's a bad guy. It's really because he's so good at his job, and he's got a reputation of money-whipping colleges Time and time and time again. And there's a part of me that's a little worried that we might get ourselves in a situation where we're paying Pittman so much money, which, hey, he's earned, okay? And he's continuing to earn. But I don't want to get into a situation where we can't hire quality assistants because guys like Kendall Bryles and Barry Odom, I don't know how long they're going to be here. Those guys, they're great coordinators and will probably end up in Barry Odom's case, getting another opportunity to be a head coach. And in Kendall Bryles' case, getting an opportunity to be a head coach for the first time. I want to make sure we're able to always bring in quality coordinators, quality assistants, because 
One thing Sam Pittman has going for him is he's got the ability to attract the best of the best. I think the top coaches out there want to work for Sam Pittman. And so I just don't want to be money whipped so bad that like now we start cutting into Pittman's budget that he has to be able to go hire quality guys. Even though I do believe he's absolutely deserved a raise. He's proving that and looking at how things are shaping up for the future. I can't say I blame the guy. I also just have a little PTSD about that massive extension and massive buyout we gave Brett Bielema after going seven and six in his second year. And then when his assistant coaches started leaving, he's having to replace them with, you know, NFL internship type guys. And it just didn't work out. I mean, for example, you all remember when Sam Pittman left to go to the University of Georgia, who did we replace him with? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I just don't want to get into a situation where Jimmy Sexton money whips us so bad that it cuts into the type of staff Pittman's able to surround himself with. Now, I trust the pit boss. I trust that he won't let something like that happen. But if there's any reservations that I have about that move, it's more about the agent than it is about our coach. That's all I got for today. There's your Razor reaction. Thank you so much for watching. I'm going to ask that you subscribe. If you're still watching right now, this is one of my longer uh, videos that I've put up here lately. Just hit subscribe right down there. You see it. Hit the link uh, and stay tuned because more Razorback content will be coming hot and heavy. Woo pig suey.